This is a tutorial on how to use the SCID chess database to study openings. The first thing you have to do is to acquire SCID by downloading it from the Internet. It's a free program, very full functional, and pretty easy to use. You can find SCID by going into Google, type SCID database, and you see here that the first link is for the SCID database website. So this is easy to, to find. If you click on this link, up comes the home page, and on the home page you see a link for downloads. If you click on that, you'll see a number of different formats for downloading, including Windows. Mac OS and Linux. So find SCID, download it to your computer, install it, and we're ready for the next step. The next thing we have to do is to find some chess games to put into our database. SCID wants chess games in the PGN format. That stands for Portable Game Notation. There are many sources for chess games in this format. Uh, you can find them on the internet. One site that is highly recommended is This Week in Chess. Just type that into Google and the first link that pops up is for This Week in Chess. This is a very nice site not just for uh, chess games in PGN format but also for news about chess you see here that there is something called Twic Downloads. If you click on that you'll find a lot of different things that you can download including uh, chess games. Uh, each file is numbered and there's a one file for each week and each of these files contain usually over a thousand games and what you want is to click on the PGN format and get any or all the files that you want uh, and put them on your computer so that you can import them into SCID. There are many other sources for PGN games uh, on the internet. If you type into Google Chess PGN Download a number of links will crop up and you can investigate these uh, and find the ones that you want. I mentioned yet another way to get chess games in PGN format, perhaps you already have a chess program. Here is one called Chess King. Uh, at this time, which is uh, March of 2012, this only costs $50. It's a pretty nice program. It contains, among other things, a chess database that has almost 5 million chess games in it, and you can export this whole database into one big PGN file, very suitable for importing into SCID. This program, of course, has a number of other features, including a very strong chess program called Houdini 2. It has puzzles. It has all sorts of stuff. But I mention it here only as another source for games. You should look on your computer. Maybe you've already bought uh, Fritz, or maybe you have some other chess program that contains a database. Quite often, these things will let you export the whole database in PGN format. Once you have a file uh, of games in PGN format, you're ready to import it into SCID, and we'll discuss that next. So far, we've downloaded SCID and installed it. We've downloaded at least one file of PGN games from the Internet. The next thing we're going to do is to set up a SCID database and populate it with our file of PGN formatted games. I recommend that you set up a SCID database to hold all of your master level games. You might call this the reference database. Into it as you accumulate new games played by strong players, you will add those games to this so-called reference database. So let's set up a new SCID database.
SCID wants me to name that, and since this is my reference database, I'll call it REF. When you do create a new database, SCID opens it up. You can find the name of the database that you're currently looking at by looking at the title bar. Here it's called REF. It has no games in it. Now we're going to add some games to this database from the PGN file that we've downloaded from the Internet. To do that, you go to the Tools menu, and it's off the screen of my capture program here, but if you scroll down this Tools menu far enough, you'll find an item called Import File of PGN Games. Click on that, and it will ask you the file that you'd like to import. Let's suppose I downloaded a file of Morphe's games from the Internet, and I called it Morphe.pgn. Click on that and SCID will populate your database and give you a little window that indicates any errors or warnings. If the file is carefully crafted, you shouldn't have any errors or warnings. Here I have two, and you can safely ignore that. Close this window, and now you see that our SCID window indicates that we have 307 games in our database. This is the name of the database again. Now as you Find new games on the internet. As time progresses, you're going to want to download new games, maybe from This Week in Chess. You can just follow this procedure, except that this time you'll have an existing database called Ref, and you'll click on File, and you'll open that existing database, and you go through the same procedure I went through. Click on Tools, click on Import File of PGN Games, and by that mechanism, you can add games to your reference database. I should point out that you probably want to set up different SCID databases for different purposes. You probably do want one big database for all of the master level games, which I've called reference here, but you can see that I have many different SCID databases. SCID does not care how many you have. It opens one at a time. You can open up many da databases at once. I'll show you why you might want to do that a little bit later. But I have separate databases for puzzles. I have a separate database for just the games that I've played. When I read a chess book and I follow along in SCID, I put those games into a separate database named after the uh, book that I'm reading. So you can find all sorts of reasons why you might want to have different SCID databases. Now it so happens that I have my own reference database and I'm going to open that up now. Uh, this database is called Mega5M. It's got something like 5 million different games in it which I've extracted from various sources. So here you can see that my reference database has got uh, close to 5 million uh, games in it. We're going to use this reference database to extract specific games so that we can study openings, and we're going to do that next. Now that we have our reference database, let's assume that we'd like to study a particular opening. Let's say the Queen's Gambit declined the Terrace variation. You can see that we have loaded here our reference database, which in this case has 4.7 million games and we want to extract from that database the games that have played the Terrish. To do that, we're going to go over to something called the Clip Base. Uh, you can open this by clicking on File, and then there's a menu item called Switch to Database. And although you can't see it here, at the tail end, there's something called Clip Base. So we click on that, and up comes the Clip Base. Now, the Clip Base is a memory-only database. Uh, it's when SCID is started, it is completely empty, and when you close down SCID, nothing in it is saved. You can think of it as a scratch pad, and you can move games into and out of this uh, clip base database. So let's put into the clip base a game that starts off with the Terrace variation. Now you can enter the game into the clip base by just moving the pieces using the cursor and I've already entered that and you can see the moves here in the notation window. 
You can play over the moves in any game either by clicking on this forward arrow or by using the arrows on your keyboard. And so if I just click through here, you can see that we're going to get the first uh, three moves of the Terrace Variation of the Queen's Camp declined, and there it is. Now what we'd like to do is look for this position in all of the games in our reference database. To do that, we click on the Search menu, and we're going to search on the current board. Up comes a search window, and we have some options here. And what we're searching on is the exact position. And we're going to search not in the clip base, but in the reference database. And here we're, we've chosen Mega 5M. So we do the search. And it's going through almost uh, 5 million games. And it finds 10,111 games out of the 4.7 million that have this uh, Tarish variation position in them. So we'll get rid of this. And you'll see that SCID is open to the Mega 5M reference database. It's telling us that we're at game 2604. That's the first game in this database that plays the Terrish. And at the bottom here, we can see that our Mega 5M database has filtered out 10,111 games of the 4.7 million. Now, I don't wish to alter my reference database in any way, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of these games into the clip base so that I can work on them. Here's how you do that. Let's bring up a window called the Database Switcher. To do that, you click on the Windows menu item, and you go down to Database Switcher. And here it is. It's, you see we have two databases open the Mega 5M and the clip base. The clip base has no games in it. Although we have started off with the Terrace, but because we haven't saved this game, there really is no games in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the games we filtered out, the 10,000 games we filtered out, and we're going to copy all of them into the clip base. To do that, you just drag and drop the Mega 5M database, which is filtered now, doesn't have 4.7 million, it's only got the 10,000 some odd games, and we just drag it down into here, and there we go. Now you see that in clip base we have 10,111 games. Now what we can do is we can close our reference database, because we have no more use for that, we're going to work with a clip base only. Now 10,000 games uh, may be more games than you really want to play with, so let's filter some of that out. So again, we'll do a search. Now we're searching on clip base because that's the one that's open. And let's do a search. And this time we're going to select header. And we get a large window that tells us what we can search on. And we don't care about the player names. Uh, we may, interestingly, uh, care about the rating. We could, for example, say we're only interested in uh, master level games uh, when we study openings. So let's just set white to be something between 2,000 and 4,000. And let's say black is the same thing. And maybe we're only interested in modern games, uh, so let's just say that we only want games between, say, 1920, and let's uh, say 2012. And let's suppose that we only want games that have a result where somebody wins. So this is where white wins, this is a, a draw, so we're not interested in those. This is where black wins, and this means there's no result. So if we select these, we're only going to get games that come to some uh, win or loss conclusion. And that's probably all the filtering we really need to do. So let's do a search, and here we go. Because we already have a game that we haven't saved in uh, clip base, it asks us if we want to discard the changes and continue. We don't care about our setup, so we'll do that. And now, from 10,000 games, we've gone down to 3,774, which you can see in this window at the bottom that we did the search with. 
So we dismissed the search window and we're back into the clip base and now if we look up here we see that we have 3,774 games in our clip base. Now let's suppose we want to live with all those games and we're going to study the Queen's Gambit decline terrace variation based upon these uh, 3,700 games. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up another database to hold our opening studies with. Now you have a number of choices here. You could set up a database and call it Queen's Gambit Declined. You could set up a database called Queen's Gambit Decline Terrace Variation, which is very specific and exactly what we have. Or you could set up a database called Openings with the anticipation that you're going to put more stuff in there and study other openings just besides this one. So just for the uh, tutorial, I'm going to set up a database called uh, Openings. So click on File and click on New and give the database name Openings. Okay, here's our opening database. It has no games in it. Uh, so let's move everything from the clip base into the openings. Again, we just drag and drop. And it asks us if we really want to do all those copying and we say yes and so we do the copying. You can see that's pretty quick. And now we are open to the openings database. You can see that up here. And we have all of them. We haven't done any filtering on this particular opening database. So now we've set up a database consisting only of games that we're interested in. They, these are games where the Queen's Gambit Decline Terrace Variation position was arrived at. And they're games played by strong players, bigger than 2,000, and relatively modern games, uh, not games going back to uh, the 16th century, of which there are some in this uh, database. Now we're done with the clip base for the time being. So let's go over here to Edit, and let's go Empty the Clip Base. And now we have a brand new scratch pad with no games in it, and we can do various things with that. For example, if we wanted to go into a variation of the Tarish, we could put that variation up into uh, the Clip Base, and we could search on our Openings database and just look at that particular variation. But let's not do that. Let's suppose you're really ambitious, and you want to study all sorts of games that just uh, start off with a terrorist variation. Here's what I recommend you do. Go up to Game. Let's go back and make sure that we're in the Openings database. Right now, and we are. Okay, we can see that up here. So let's select a random game. To do that, you click on the Game menu item, and you load a random game. Now, what you can do at this point is you can click through this game and see if you can remember the games, or the moves rather, in the Terrace variation. You can play this either from white or from black's perspective. To switch the board, you can just either click on one of these icons up here, or you can just hit the period button and it switches from the keyboard, okay? So let's suppose we want to go through this game from white's perspective. So we have white at the bottom. And we can play through here. Now you can say, well, I'm trying to study the Queen's game of decline. What is the first move? And then you say, well, gee, I think it's uh, D4. And then you just play that move out with the arrow key on your keyboard. And sure enough, you're right. Now you ask yourself, what is Black's response? Well, maybe you're just studying it from the white perspective. And you don't care to test yourself on Black's response. So again, you just click through, and it makes that move. Now you're in the position of having to know or guess or search your memory for the second move of the Queen's Gambit Decline Tarish and perhaps you think it's uh, knight to c3 and you'd click and you'd find well you were wrong it's really c4. So in this way you can test yourself to see if you really know the first moves in the Tarish. Now you get to the end here and maybe that's as much as you cared to memorize and now you're in a game, a master level game and I advise that you click through this game, try to study it, see what, if you can understand what's going on. The value in playing master level games over is that you learn not just the first few moves of the opening, but some of the positions that the opening leads to and how masters deal with these openings. I read somewhere that the best predictor of success in chess 
is not how many tournament games you've played, not how many puzzles you've solved, not how many books you've read, but how many master games you've played through. This was a study done by a psychologist and uh, presumably has some truth to it. If that's the case, you are well advised to play through uh, master games. And uh, one, uh, one appropriate time to do that is when you're setting the opening. So here, you can just click through here and you can see if you understand why these people are making these moves. I'm going to make another tutorial on how to study master games with SCID. There's all sorts of things you can do to uh, quiz yourself and to uh, understand the game better. But for now, let's leave this with the following remark. If you were to play over, say, five games from White's perspective and five games from Black's perspective every day, in a couple of weeks, I guarantee you, you're going to know the first few moves of the Queen's Gambit Decline Terrace Variation. More than that, if you do bother to play through these games, you're going to see how Masters have led themselves into a middle game and what kind of middle game uh, comes out of this particular opening. In our little example here, we've only tried to memorize the first four moves of this particular opening. I hope you can see that if you wanted to, you could carry this opening as far as you want, search for games that result in that particular position, and use the same technique to try and memorize as many moves as you wish in any particular variation of any particular opening that you care to.